stands thunder for the true Lord. Kneel before me. My life began under the shadow of a curse. Years ago, my father was the first orc to drink demon's blood, corrupting the horde. Garrosh grew up in a life of shame. His father, Grom Hellscream, leader of the Warsong clan, had led the orcs down a corrupted path. After they drank the demon's blood, they abandoned their honorable heritage and just became bloodthirsty monsters. Throughout Garrosh's young life, he was relentlessly harassed for his father's actions and how he doomed the orcish race. To make matters worse, when the Horde was being formed, Garrosh and the Maghar orcs were infected with a disease called the Red Pox, making them unfit to fight for the Horde. And ironically, this would save them from being corrupted by the demon blood like the rest of the orcs. But for Garrosh, it meant he had the stew in his dishonor never to have learned the deeds of his father on the foreign world of Azeroth. They left for war, leaving only those of us who were sick and weak behind. It was not until I was much older I learned the truth of his redemption. Garrosh, I have great news for you. All your news is about the past. I hate it. <laughs> I know that my bloodline is tainted. I can only hurt my people. That isn't true. Your choices are your own. People only see your father when they look at you. But that will change. I just don't want to hear about my father and all of his terrible crimes. Sharing your feelings is the best way forward. Healing is a process. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Pathetic. Weak. Your bloodline is tainted. You are weak. Enough delaying. Listen to my grandson. <gasps> he has come a long way. Garrosh, son of Hellscream. Your father lived and died as our greatest hero. He saved us all by killing the demon, Manoroth, and lifting the curse. Ugh. A great burden has been lifted from my shoulders. Thank you, Thrall. During the events of the Burning Crusade expansion, Thrall saw great promise in Garrosh. Sure, he was short-tempered and prideful, but he was in tune with orcish traditions, something that the orcs had lost over the years. He also wanted to honor the memory of Grom Hellscream, the one who saved Thrall's life and served as his mentor. And after finding out his father had redeemed himself, now Garrosh felt pressure to live up to his image. So Garrosh joined Warchief Thrall's advisory council. When the uncorrupted orc entered the Dark Portal and arrived in Duratar, what the fuck is this? He realized it was a far cry from what he had expected. They were living in an inhospitable desert, lacking natural resources or many geographical advantages. There was better places for the Horde to settle, but ironically, Warchief Thrall valued peace above all else, which is something Garrosh vehemently disagreed with. The Horde's entire foundation was built on war. Why change that to appease other factions and let your own people suffer? Garrosh's traditional orcish ways of thinking inflicted friction amongst the Warchief's advisory board. Thrall invited me to join him as his advisor on the world of Azeroth. I knew I was ready to follow in my father's great legacy, but not all of Thrall's other advisors agreed. Why do you always undermine my counsel, boy? I am no boy. You weaken the Horde with compromise and capitulation. I see the Horde as it should have been. Bold and strong. <sighs> Foolish Magar. 
peace is achieved through negotiation. Even children know that. We should have you cleaning the peon's boots to learn your place. I will not tolerate your disrespect, and I will not suffer weakness. Thrall should never have appointed you to advise him. Anyone could see your ignorance. Jealous words from a feeble foe. Is that how you speak to your elders? It isn't you Thrall loves, only the memory of your father. You'll pay for your insolence one day. <laughs> Are you expecting an apology? <laughs> Garrosh would continue to be on the advisory board during the events of Wrath of the Lich King. When the Scourge became a rising threat once more, Thrall decided they would take a cautious approach. They should send scouting parties to Northrend, they should discuss tactics with the Alliance, and organize a careful attack plan. Garrosh hated that idea. The Maghar Org demanded that they should just take all of their Horde armies, go crush the Alliance, then storm into Northrend and deliver the same brutal fate to the Scourge. Thrall hated the idea. The Alliance wasn't a threat, and wandering into a frozen wasteland of Northrend with no intel is a ridiculous idea. The two continued to feud against one another until they settled it in a duel in the Ring of Valor. The two traded blows until... of the horn tremble and know your doom the scourge had invaded orgrimmar and with the help from the player characters we push back the invasion and then thrall realizes that you know garrosh might be right the horde needed to act and fast when the scourge attacked i had a chance to prove the strength of my strategy to everyone Thrall sent me to Northrend to lead the Horde expedition and eliminate our enemies. Garrosh was promoted to Overlord of the Warsong Offensive and established his command post at Warsong Hold. Garrosh was advised by High Overlord Sarfang, who countered Garrosh's reckless bloodlust as a commander. He told him that if Garrosh led his armies to fight the Alliance, he would be leading them down a dark path. It would be the same dark path his father had led the orcs down when they were corrupted by demon blood. And if Garrosh ignored his protests, Sarfang would kill him himself. So Garrosh begrudgingly agreed. Kind of. He promoted commanders who harnessed the same hatred for the Alliance, and initiated attacks on them in Grizzly Hills, and even fought them during the climax of the war in Ice Crown Citadel to defeat the Lich King. Despite this, Garrosh was a firm believer in honorable combat, and refused to fight the Alliance if they were locked in battle with the Scourge. If they were going to defeat the Alliance, it would be on equal footing. This respect for honor can also be seen in Warsong Hold, where they have Alliance deserters imprisoned in filthy pig pens as punishment for their cowardice. Garrosh appears in various scenes in Wrath of the Lich King, where his main character trait is being a hot-headed asshole who uh, only wants to defeat the Alliance. But by the end of the expansion, the Scourge was defeated and the Horde armies returned to Kalimdor, and Garrosh was considered a hero for his leadership. He was bestowed with his father's former weapon, Gorhowl, for his efficient, if somewhat problematic, display of leadership during the war. This will prove useful. All will fall in the name of Hellstream for the Horde! But unfortunately, these times of celebration were short-lived. The lands the Horde lived in were dry of resources, and they were on the verge of a famine. The elements had been disturbed and Duratar had become under distress. These natural disasters disturbed supply lines, and the Night Elves nearby refused to take any part in mutual beneficial trade. The Elves were hesitant to work with the Horde since the Wrathgate. This is an awful event during the war in Northrend, where Rogue Forsaken massacred the Alliance and their former Horde allies. And the tragedy clearly displayed the Horde as not being able to be trusted. The peacekeepers of the Horde, Thrall, Karen, and Hamel Runetotem, worked to mend relations with the Night Elves. And of course, Garrosh was pissed. Blech. Why give when you can take? The Wrathgate was a tragedy for both factions, and they should take what they need by force. 
Meanwhile, during all this, fire elementals attacked Orgrimmar, and the world continued to crumble in unrest. Warchief Thrall was not only a leader, but a shaman. And with a heavy heart, he realized that in order to soothe the world around him, he needed to leave his position as Warchief to find the elemental answers he seeked. But he needed to find someone to replace him. He thought about Karen or Vol'jin, and while they were fine leaders, they would be rejected by the orcs for not being one of their kind, and in dire times like this, the Horde could not handle the unrest this would cause. But Garrosh… Garrosh had the heritage of a true orc. He was the son of the Warsong clan chieftain and was an uncorrupted orc. Right after the war on Northrend, he was seen as a hero of the Horde, and he would be able to galvanize the faction in these desperate times. Was he reckless? Totally, but Thrall had plans to regulate his behavior. Thrall summoned the soon-to-be warchief the Gromash Hold and told him that he was to be promoted to warchief. <gasps> Garrosh was taken aback. He was a warrior, not a politician, but Thrall assured him, telling him that Vol'jin, Karen, and Ytrig would serve as his advisors. Garrosh then accepted his role as the leader of the Horde, and Thrall left to go do shaman stuff, and soon after, Garrosh immediately transformed Orgrimmar into a city of war, moving Gromash Hold from the Valley of Wisdom to the Valley of Strength. Garrosh was quick to dominate his new role as war chief, and the drums of war thundered through the streets of Orgrimmar as the Horde readied themselves for conquest. Garrosh's appointed advisors tried to instill some sort of diplomatic logic into him, but it fell on deaf ears. Anger management? I'm great at managing people with my anger! Weakling! What? You will obey your war chief without question. Me busy. Leave me alone. Ugh. You dare speak to your war chief with such disrespect? Yes. I am the war chief of the Horde. Respect my authority. Me not that kind of orc. <laughs> Dismissed. During this time of mass rebuilding, events out of Garrosh's control took place. In Ashenvale, a peaceful meeting between Night Elves and Tarn was disrupted by agents of the Twilight Hammer cult who posed as members of the Horde. They slaughtered the Tarn and Elves alike. The only survivor was Hamel Rune Totem, who then traveled to Cairn Bloodhoof, chieftain of the Tarn, and explained what had happened. Karen immediately came to the conclusion that this was Garrosh's doing, and reckless behavior like this is definitely something up his alley. But when Karen confronted the war chief, he denied it, which was true, but Karen didn't really believe him. This combined with the warpath Garrosh was leading the Horde down led the leader of the Tarn to conduct drastic measures. You are not so clever as you think. I have lived my whole life with honor. You may trust my counsel. I think you mean cowardice, and I do not trust it at all. Respect our ways. Thrall's advisors had promised to support me, but instead they turned on me the moment the war chief was gone. One of them, Cairn Bloodhoof, was so bold as to challenge me to a mock Dora, a duel for leadership of the Horde. <laughs> I think not. Have you come to fight me, old bull? I fear we may not find an agreement outside of battle. Thralls are only his fondness for you, not who you truly are. I answer to no one! If only you were a 
as skilled at listening as you are at attacking. Ha! The great Cairn Bloodhoof has fallen! Think again before questioning me. But wait, wasn't that almost too easy? Unbeknown to Garrosh, there was further levels of betrayal that influenced their duel. Before this battle, Garrosh and Karen's weapons were ritualistically blessed. The person that blessed Garrosh's axe was Magatha Grimtotem, leader of the Grimtotem Taran, who wanted Karen Bloodhoof dead so the matriarch could usurp control over Thunderbluff during his absence. She secretly poisoned Garrosh's axe, making the honorable duel actually totally dishonorable. Garrosh was left conflicted. When he discovered this truth, it stripped him of the glory of an honorable, fair fight. Magatha was the orchestrator of his dishonor, and it filled Garrosh with rage. When Magatha reached out to request aid from Garrosh to claim Thunderbluff, he replied by wishing her a violent death. I will destroy everything you have ever loved! <laughs> But despite Garrosh's refusal for aid, the Grim Totem still managed to take control over Thunderbluff for a time. Garrosh later then had a meeting with Bane Bloodhoof, son of Karen Bloodhoof, and discussed the situation at hand. The Warchief fully expected Karen to request a duel because of the death of his father, but to Garrosh's surprise, Bane realized the truth of Magatha's betrayal and swore the Bloodhoof tribe's loyalty to the Horde. The Grim Totem ran out of Thunderbluff soon after and were banished from Mulgore and forced to settle in the Stone Talon Mountains. Soon after, Garrosh continued his conquest and the Horde armies spread across Azeroth. This includes the Forsaken invading Gilneas. While Garrosh keeps a watchful eye on the untrustworthy undead, they also imperialize the Twilight Highlands and claim the forests of Ashenvale for its resources. This assault was a decisive victory, mainly because Garrosh had captured proto-dragons and Magnetar from the previous Northrend offensive and unleashed them on the Alliance. Under Garrosh's leadership, they had captured the enchanted forests of Ashenvale, a feat not even his father could have achieved in the past. Well, Garrosh would have fully claimed Ashenvale if the story wasn't told in the Wolfheart novel, where the main character is Garrosh's mortal enemy, Varian, King of the Alliance, who kicks Garrosh's ass and fully repels the Horde invaders. Garrosh appears a lot during the questing in the Cataclysm expansion, but there's one specific quest that is a fan favorite, and it's in the Stone Talon Mountains, where an overlord named Kromgar bombs a whole bunch of innocent druids who are not hostile at all. In response, Garrosh goes, What have you done, Kromgar? Was my command to murder innocents, Kromgar? Lord Chief! <laughs> Sir! I! Am I a murderer, Kromgar? No, Wajiv! Then I ask you again, what have you done? I sent you into Stone Talon Mountains with an army. Your orders were to secure this land for the Horde. Instead, you laid waste to the land, murdered innocents, children even. Honor, Kromgar. No matter how dire the battle, Never forsake it. Overlord Kromgar, you have disgraced the Horde. By my right as War Chief, I hereby relieve you of duty. You are dismissed. Now, this quest is really weird because in a dev interview, Alex Fasarabi, former narrative lead of Warcraft, basically said, uh, yeah, my bad, this quest was actually written incorrectly and out of character. He says, and I quote, I didn't stick to the path with Garrosh. I didn't, not everyone was on board. Not everyone got the memo, as it were, and as we were designing, that was my fault. Because when you're doing, when you're trying, because I was actually trying to bring Garrosh around and Stone Talon was going to be the first of that. Cataclysm was a pretty crazy time for us, which is one of the rare moments in Warcraft history where the writers are just like, uh, yeah, uh, my, my fault, sorry guys. This event is still considered canon though, I, I think, 
just wildly out of character, and as we see later, Garrosh has no problem with killing innocents. Anyways, once again, not everyone in the Horde approved of Garrosh's warmongering nature. Vol'jin, leader of the Darkspear Trolls, outright told Garrosh that he would kill him if he continued this bloodthirsty conquest. Oh, enough of your nonsense! And in response, Garrosh kicked out all of the Darkspear Trolls from Orgrimmar and they settled back on the Echo Isles. Soon after, Garrosh amassed a powerful navy which effectively blockaded all of Kalimdor, which kind of forced his less than enthusiastic Horde allies to remain loyal. But a critical place Garrosh needed to deal with in order to secure all of Kalimdor was Theramore, which was the Warchief's next target. Garrosh amassed his Korkron army, and first they sacked Northwatch Hold. All the while, the other leaders of the Horde were starting to feel a bit more uneasy about their new insane warchief. These members of the Horde held a secret meeting to discuss the concerns about this event and their unpredictable, violent warchief. What? Say that again! As warchief, I am ashamed to partner with a coward like you. Garrosh found out about their secret meeting and clarifies that he is not like their former warchief Thrall, who is a capitulating pacifist bitch, and that it was his indecisiveness that put the Horde in this situation in the first place. Members of the Secret Council tried to instill some reasoning into the Warchief. You know, we've harbored peace with Theramore for years now, we basically own everything else in Southern Kalimdor. I mean, do we really need to do this? Think about the consequences of an outward attack like- All of Kalimdor will belong to the Orcs! Get in my way, and I'll cut you down! Remember that! Garrosh then let them all off with a warning for this deceit and left. Next was the attack on Theramore, in which Garrosh hatched a brilliant plan. First, slowly march the giant horde army towards Theramore, and then just stand around the gates menacingly. The Alliance obviously will see their approach and rally all of its armies and leaders to Theramore, just stack up the whole city with their most powerful soldiers. The Horde armies will try and breach the city, and then just leave and pretend like they lost. The Alliance will foolishly celebrate, and then Garrosh will drag a giant mana bomb nuke and drop it on the city. I'm organizing a little surprise party for Jaina. It's going to be a blast. This dealt a massive blow to the Alliance, with only a few survivors escaping. In response, the Alliance retaliated by attacking Durotar, and Jaina Proudmore threatened to consume all of Orgrimmar in a giant tsunami. Eventually she was talked down, and this assault was repelled by the Horde, which included Garrosh and Varian dueling for a third time, and the Alliance was repelled, but they did reclaim Northwatch Hold and the Barrens. This Alliance retaliation enraged Garrosh so much that he totally transformed his approach to the conflict. Originally, he just wanted to drive out the Alliance from Kalimdor. Now, his plan was to just kill literally all of them. All the, all the Alliance, all over the world, just kill them, kill them all! Every man, woman, and child a part of the Horde would help in this barbaric crusade or face the wrath of his elite guards called the Korkron. And coincidentally, during this time, the mists have been lifted from the previously undiscovered continent of Pandaria, a land full of peaceful panda people. And the Horde and the Alliance immediately rushed to claim all of its resources and just murder the out of each other, and turn the land into a war zone. Two months into this invasion, Garrosh arrives and Vol'jin, leader of the Darkspear Trolls, raises his concerns once again. You know, we keep just doing the senseless violence, maybe we should stop. In response, Garrosh sends Vol'jin on a mission with his Korkron guards, and they stab him in the throat. <laughs> Unfortunately, Vol'jin survives this assassination attempt. One of the main reasons Garrosh and his Horde armies came to Pandaria is because of the powerful artifacts that they could obtain. One of these artifacts was called the Divine Bell. The Alliance were eager for vengeance, but they could not take it, 
so long as we retained our advantage. To ensure this, I sought an artifact in Pandaria, the Divine Bell. But the enemy was quick to interfere. Stop, Garrosh! You do not know what that bell is capable of! You run bravely to your death, young one. We haven't met before, but, uh, I'm Antoin Rin. <laughs> so in the end, it is not Varian, but his whelp, who comes to face me. Honestly, I'm just trying to help you. The Mogu made the Divine Bell to create chaos, but the Pandaren created a mallet to counter it. That mallet was hidden for thousands of years. Until now. I have no idea what you said. Nor do I care. Look, Tar Ogar! Blood and Thunder! <laughs> Your alliance must be at its end if it's sending children against me. Okay, well, Garrosh was going to claim the Divine Bell, but Andun was just being so goddamn annoying. He just decided to break the bell over the frail 14-year-old boy because he was asking for it. Besides, Garrosh has much more important matters to attend to. Large factions in the Horde have become completely fed up with the War Chief's warmongering, especially the Darkspear tribe. This leads Garrosh to denounce the trolls as traitors and forcibly take their holdings and execute its members. And the rest of the non-Orcish races were rounded up in the Valley of Spirits. You are all unworthy of the Horde. Vol'jin, having survived his assassination attempt, declares a full-on civil war, naming those who fought against Garrosh the Darkspear Rebellion, an ally with Horde and Alliance player characters. This rebellion is quick to reclaim the Echo Isles and Razor Hill. Meanwhile, Garrosh is hoarding powerful Pandaren artifacts and amassing mercenaries to supplement his Korkron forces. His goblin excavation teams he hired back in Pandaria found the heart of the deceased old god Yasharaj, and Garrosh throws it in the pool in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, corrupts the lands, and kills a panda. Now Garrosh has fully submerged himself in his villain arc. His headstrong nature and brutal perseverance in claiming all of Azeroth for the Horde has forced him into a situation where his allies have turned against him, and now he's willing to do anything possible to prove their foolishness wrong. Horde and Alliance forces raid the city of Orgrimmar, fighting through the streets and dismantling Garrosh's Orcish Horde, before they have their final showdown with the misguided warchief, Thrall. Garrosh's old mentor attempts to talk some reasoning into the one he granted the title of Warchief. It is not too late, Garrosh. Lay down the mantle of Warchief. We can end this here, now, with no more bloodshed. Ha! <laughs> Do you remember nothing of honor, of glory on a battlefield? You who would parlay with the humans, who allowed warlocks to practice their dark magics right under our feet. You are weak. We are the Orcish Horde, the true Horde. We die, bloody and thrashing on the field of battle, like true Orcs should. You are an Orc no longer, and speak for none but yourself. You betrayed our people to forge your fragile alliances, and I will take great pleasure in tearing them apart. Then you have forced my hand. I will correct the mistake I made long ago. Spirits of the wind, the earth, the water, hear my call! Come to my aid! My dark shaman have twisted and tortured the elements for miles around. They cannot hear you now. Once again, you prove too weak and powerless to do anything. Never powerless, Garrosh. And never alone. So, 
You wish to face off against a real Orc War Chief. So be it. I, Garrosh, son of Grom, will show you what it means to be called Hellstream. The fight with Garrosh ultimately culminates in him absorbing the powers of the heart of Yasharaj, turning him into a corrupted monster and transporting players to an alternate dimension in the Stormwind Harbor, where the leaders of the Horde and the Alliance are pinned on spikes and Garrosh's orcish horde reigns supreme. But obviously, since he fights player characters, he is defeated. No! It cannot end like this! What I... what I have seen... No... No! This world is my destiny! My destiny! You disappoint me, Garrosh. After Garrosh is defeated, Vol'jin takes his place as the leader of the Horde, and a trial is organized for Garrosh. Now, obviously, he is guilty for all the crimes, but politically, the trial allows there to be some clear separation between Garrosh's actions and the Horde. It lets them condemn the War Chief and work on mending relations with the Alliance. And let me just say, one of the reasons why I love Garrosh's story so much is because it feels just so incredibly grounded. The War Chief's actions had rippling effects across multiple factions on Azeroth, and were able to see their characterization in meaningful, grounded ways. We can see the Night Elves in their stubborn unwillingness to help the Horde, the pacifist, gentle giant nature of the Tarin who only use violence as the last option, and the cultural divide between the generations of Orcs. For like 95% of Garrosh's story, he wasn't some big bad guy corrupted by a higher power, or some otherworldly eldritch horror. He was just an orc from a bygone era, looking to continue his father's great legacy and ensure a prosperous future for his people by any means necessary. This antagonistic approach is how Garrosh was eventually hit with the villain bat because, well, this is an MMO and Warcraft's narrative needs to be constantly building up bad guys for us to defeat because you know, a raid needs to come out every single major patch. But yeah, what makes Garrosh's story so great is the understanding people can connect with throughout his tragic story in a villain arc grounded in misguided pride. Okay, so anyways, during Garrosh's trial, he doesn't deny any of his crimes, and then works with a time-traveling and two-year-old dragon to go to an alternate dimension Draenor and meet up with an alternate universe version of his dad, and tell him not to drink the demon blood, and instead they should ride Iron Horde motorcycles instead and take over Azeroth, but like one-fourth of the way into this plan, at the very beginning of this expansion, Thrall finds him, challenges him to a duel, and just kills him. Okay, so the transition between Mist of Pandaria and the Warlords of Draenor might be the biggest jump the shark moment in Warcraft history, especially for Garrosh's story. You know, Warlords of Draenor is such a tough expansion for me to criticize because, you know, I have really rose-tinted goggles around the expansion. Is going to a time-traveling alternate dimension totally ridiculous? Yes. Is there not a lot of content in the expansion? Yes. Does Garrosh's story go totally off the rails for this to even happen? Yes. Does the main story suck? Yes. But also some of the best media, raid bosses, and world building Blizzard has ever done is also in this expansion, uh, so I kinda have to give it a pass. Also, the fight between Garrosh and Thrall is one of the best cinematics they have ever made, especially when it comes to the voice acting. You made me war chief! You left me to pick up your pieces! You failed me! Warcraft's story would continue to progress over the next three expansions, and then during the Shadowlands, there would be a surprising return of everyone's favorite war criminal in the Realm of Death. It's just that 
him returning is so bad and over the top fan service that it kind of turns into being amazing. In the Sanctum of Domination, Garrosh has been tortured for his life essence, but his willpower is just so unbreakable. And when players free him, he just doubles down on everything he believed when he was alive. It's just a perfect fan service end to one of the most headstrong characters in all of Warcraft. I submit to no one, not you, not the jailer. And not that coward throw! For the horn! Garrosh is the best villain in all of Warcraft history because he isn't just some corrupted big bad guy. He's an intricate character whose upbringing is highly specific to the Warcraft universe. His story was something that was slowly built up over the span of five expansions. And during his storyline, there were serious consequences to his actions, which helped innovate on other characters' storylines and alter the world in meaningful ways. I highly doubt he will ever return to the story again, but we can still appreciate the legacy of the best villain ever written in the Warcraft universe.